Uh, I know that people come to this show for distraction. We have a fun cast in today. I guarantee you we will be that distraction from what happened over the weekend. But we can't start this show without discussing the tragic events of the weekend. Uh, One person lost their life. A couple people are still receiving medical attention, uh, injured from the assassination attempt on former President Trump's life uh, over the weekend. And to say it was, it was jarring to experience all of that, I think, is an understatement. I kind of felt numb. Uh, I, I th- Where were you when you, w- when you heard the news? Uh, I was sitting at home. I, I too, felt numb. Uh, You start to ask yourself questions as to how this is happening in 2024. You start to think about the gun laws in the United States of America. You start to think about the Secret Service. You start to think about how lucky Donald Trump is to be alive today. And you wonder and you ask yourself, how could someone get that close with a rifle, with any sort of weapon, to a former president and a guy who was currently running for president of the United States. I was numb as well. Yeah, I couldn't process all those things all at once. That happened, I guess, in the several hours that followed. It was kind of eerie in that I was leaving the American Century Championship in Tahoe, and I remember when I when I was in high school, 9-11 happened, and I was trying to piece things together by hearing people talk around the lockers. This was also like pre-smartphones and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I remember picking up on certain things and I thought people were talking about how Independence Day was airing on, like, Network Fox. It was a Sunday night movie. And I thought people were talking about that. And I started piecing together more of this information. It was kind of similar. I was leaving this golf course, and I heard people talking, like, there, Don, President Trump was shot at. I was like, wait, what? So I, I X-search Trump shots fired, and I see uh, this incredibly strong image uh, of Donald Trump bleeding from the side of his face, holding a fist in the air with the American flag behind him, a a really striking image. Uh, And I start finding out what happened. And yeah, Sue got to all the same questions. Like, if a former president is there, this has to be. The Secret Service is there. This is one of the more secure places on the planet. And you realize the shot came from outside the grounds and you have all these questions. But it was a moment in time. I, I continued my walk. I got to the casino. Every TV had been either switched to news coverage or or the news preempted what was going on. All the big time anchors were called in. Wall to wall coverage uh, on this um, really horrific act, and then the processing starts happening. You you try to find out is anybody injured? Did they capture this person? Uh, the world that we live in right now. You start seeing all the misinformation on social media and you try to parse what's real, what isn't. And then you start processing. And my process was, I understand how we got here. And that makes me like really, really sad. Uh, In the last few years, we had what happened on January 6th. We had uh, uh, an armed assailant enter the home of the Pelosi's and and, uh, try a politically motivated attack that uh, severely injured Nancy Pelosi's husband. There are things that we have seen recently, um, both over the weekend and the last two years, which I personally thought we'd never see in my lifetime. Yeah, and um, that, and now we're, <laughs> we have this crescendo over the weekend of an attempt on, on Donald Trump's life. And I think in the days that followed, what, what really struck me, was how normal everything seemed to be afterwards. I, I thought that this would still be something that everybody is living with right now. Well, what do you think was going to happen? I th- like, we I, were going to cancel sporting events. Things were going to, like, what do you think was going to happen? Yeah, because I you could see, like, all the sporting events that happened <laughs> that were on schedule that, that followed, and you, you start asking questions. Like, there's no way any of this would be happening if that if that bullet was a little bit closer to Donald Trump. And I was just really struck by how the world kept moving and I want to hit pause on that because, no, the world should not keep moving. This is— Well, Mike, I, hold on a second because Trump kept moving. Well, yeah, Trump— I believe he played golf yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trump uh, was was pictured at the golf course, which, you know, I mean, people can deal with <laughs> an attack on their life however they want. One of your supporters is in the hospital. People can parse, like, what, what the optics are there. That's not—but I do want to talk about the general normalcy that— Everybody just kind of fell into, and no, we, we shouldn't be normal. The, 
there is a huge, very clear and obvious spike in politically motivated violence. Sometimes it plays out in hate crimes. Um, sometimes it may play out in hugely toxic rhetoric on your social media. And unfortunately, it's played out now with a, an assassination attempt on presently the leading candidate for president. And we should do everything in our power to put our foot down and say this should not be normal. This should not be reacted to in the way that it is. We need to, again, it's cliche, but use this as a moment to come together. And I'm a little scared that we're not. And you're, we're just, sca- you're scared because Biden said we need to come together. Trump has said he has scrapped his entire speech for tonight. Uh, Republican National Convention. He has scrapped the entire speech. He will talk about unity and dialing it down a little bit and all of us coming together. You don't believe them, is what you're saying. I, because you have every reason to be skeptical about that. You do. I, I think that uh, so far people are, are kind of meeting the moment, saying the right things, and sometimes not saying anything is is the right thing, especially when you consider some of the, the track records here. But then I started processing, like, well, what is my role in this? Am I a contributing factor? Am I making the discourse worse? I, I, am I, by calling out things that I see, contributing to a toxic rhetoric? Do I want to kind of publicly check out on all of this? All these questions start popping up. What does this mean for my family? What does this mean for November? Is is this going to be worse? Is this the start of something? Because that was a fear that I had, which was also post-traumatic stress from 9-11. Uh, because you start seeing things pop up on on social media and you you see all this increased security. And I really do hope that it looks like from 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 a tragedy standpoint, we have the one loss of life. The former president is, as you mentioned, playing golf. Hopefully, it all ends there. And we can all just take the temperature down, dial it back, and realize that we are percolating at an insane place. And, Maybe, hopefully in retrospect, that's the crescendo and it doesn't get any worse after that. And I really hope the politicians involved take the opportunity to cool everything down because this was it was something that doesn't happen here. And if I'm someone from another country. Happened in the 80s, hasn't happened since Ronald Reagan. Yeah, well, I I was actually reminded of this on social media. Someone threw a a grenade at at President Bush and it didn't go off. Right. I I was not aware of that. That, uh, But um, yeah, I would say that uh, let's all take the opportunity to realize this needs to cool off. Um, I'm really worried about our reaction to it almost as much as I was made worried by the Attempt. Now, let's talk about the attempt. Uh, we know some things about the shooter. Again, this is a very tricky time for misinformation on the Internet. But this happened in a state where the shooter got this gun. He's not old enough to rent a car in this state, but he is old enough to procure an assault rifle and take an attempt on the former president's life. And he can buy that rifle, walk through a field, get to within 160 yards, I guess, of the yeah. president, former president of the United States. He can do that, but he can't drive. He can't drink. So if I'm saying things like this doesn't happen in our country and I've I've seen the perspective of people from outside of our country and they usually just turn and say, what are you talking about? Of course, it happens in your country. Look at the last few years. Look at your record with gun violence and mass shootings. And that was another thing that I started to process after the initial shock of the attempt on the, uh, on the former president's life is people can't gather and celebrate a, a, common, uh, a, a common tether anymore without the fear of this. That's supposed to be one of the more secure places on the planet. And gun violence is lapping up uh, uh, upon its shores. It's because guns are so accessible, Mike, in the United States. So we know that. Like We've been down this many, many times. And hopefully uh, this will lead to a change in gun laws. But we know it won't. It won't. Right? It won't. Yeah. There, there, were, there were, you know, when, when Sandy Hook was allowed to happen, you realize that we were at the point of no return. This is a, an attempt on the former president's life. If, if there's any kind of eye-opening moment when it comes to, to gun laws, uh, it would be that one. I don't think we're going to see that, but hopefully, again, the the former president has been relatively quiet publicly. Uh, he's put a couple 
messages out on Truth Social, but this is an opportunity to do something good when it comes to gun violence. But um, I don't think I don't know how realistic that is. But there is some. You'll good find that, out tonight, right? Like there is he, some. Like good. Donald Trump has first crack at kind of you know you know uniting the country, uniting the parties. They're never going to agree on everything, but at least they could dial down the temperature a little bit. And Donald Trump has first crack at that this evening. It's a it's a huge evening for America. I think COVID was another one of these opportunities that the former President Trump had in his past, where he had an opportunity to unify, and the discourse was such that we got just more extreme and more polarized. And I hope that that does not happen in, in in the next few days. And I think this is a huge moment in time, and Donald Trump's reaction to it is hugely important. And I hope, for the sake of everybody, we don't uh, we don't make things worse because that was was scary. And you want to lean on, hey, that's not our country. In the last few years, kind of has been. And now we have this assassination attempt, and hopefully it's in our rearview mirror and not something that's predictive for the road ahead.